Hey everyone, welcome back to Connor Key's Money Corner, where I share with you how to handle your money financially and not emotionally. It's behavioral finance at its best. Hey, last week I shared with you the four chronological steps to handling your money. Really quickly, that was number one, the max out retirement savings every year. Then two, pay off all your high interest debt. Then three, accumulate a six to 12 month rainy day fund. And then four, invest outside of your retirement plan. Well, this week, Eric writes in and asks a great question. Hey, Ed, where does saving for our college, excuse me, our child's college education fit into those four steps? Well, that's a great question, Eric, and it piggybacks perfectly off what we talked about last week. And here's the answer, and it's simple. Parents need to save for the retirement first and foremost before they save for their child's college education. And until you save to that IRS maximum each year for retirement, you should not be saving for your child's college. And yes, this will be a surprise to a lot of you. And there's a big reason and a simple reason. And that is there is no such thing as a retirement loan. Retirement must be pre-funded. You have to save for retirement in advance of retirement. Now, as a financial advisor, I would want you to save for both, obviously. After maxing out your retirement savings to the maximum each year, then go ahead and save in 529 plans for your child's college education. But only if you can do one first, save for retirement. Now, that's hard for us to do. The best analogy here to talk about this is what we hear when we're on a flight. When a flight attendant gets on the intercom and says, parents, put your oxygen mask on first. Here, parents, save for your retirement first. Now, this is something that we parents all struggle with. We love our kids. We want the best for them. In fact, we want it better than it was for us. And we tend to, when this topic comes up, look back and see what our parents did for us. If they paid for us, we feel obligated to do the same for our children. But the reality is the cost of college has changed dramatically over those past 30 years. While average U.S. inflation annually for the past 30 years has averaged 2.32%, average annual U.S. college inflation has averaged 5.23%, more than double. And as a result, college costs have quadrupled over those last 30 years. Remember, if we handle our money decisions the way our parents handled theirs, we will fail where they succeeded. College money decisions made 30 years ago are completely different than college money decisions being made today. And over the years, I've seen a lot of this. Parents falling victim to saving aggressively for their child's college, but at the expense of them not saving enough for their retirement. Yes, their child gets through college, but they lack enough money now to retire. So what do we do here, right? Well, first of all, we need to remember something very important when it comes to this college decision, and that is college is an investment. And if with any investment, we need to focus on the rate of return of that investment. Think about this. If you make the same amount of money, if you, regardless of what you invested, if you invested 20,000 or 50,000, you're gonna make the same amount of money, then only invest the 20,000. Financial advisor and personal finance expert Rick Edelman has the best quote on this. While it's long, it's powerful. And here's what he says. When it comes to college, there's an attitude of, I got to do whatever it takes to get into the college that I want to go to, which is crazy from a financial planning perspective. What you need to do is say not how much do I need to borrow, but rather what can I do to reduce the amount of money that we're spending on this degree in the first place? Think about it. If your kid said to you, I need a car, right? Your, your parents, if, if you were the kid and you said that to your parents, your, putting, your parents wouldn't say, yeah, you're right. You do need a car. Let's go buy one. We're going to let you choose the car that you want to buy. You want to buy a Rolls Royce? Not a problem. We'll do whatever it takes to figure out how to pay for it. We wouldn't do that with a car. Why today do we do that with college? There's, he goes, Rick goes on to say that there's this warped assumption that the more money you spend on a college degree, 
the better off you are. And that's absolutely ridiculous. Of course, there are some fields and professions where that's true, but for the overwhelming majority of college students today who are going to enter ordinary careers and fields of study, paying $150,000 more for a degree than necessary is not going to translate to economic value to you. In fact, it's the exact opposite. As Rick says there, we need to focus on keeping a budget and keeping college costs down for our children, especially if we put all of our money in retirement, like I'm telling you to do, and don't have a ton for them for college. Once committed to keeping the cost down, then we are, then there are many ways to go ahead and fund that college. So obviously the first and most popular are student loans. Remember where I said to you, parents cannot get a retirement loan. A child can go ahead and get a student loan. And here's the big difference. The student has a 40 year working career to pay that loan back, which we no longer have that much time because at our ages, retirement's gonna be a lot sooner than that. Another option other than student loans is getting a job with a company, a company that helps you pay for college. Some of those companies include Starbucks, Amazon, Chipotle, Walmart, T-Mobile, and Pop Papa John's, just to name a few. I saw a recent article listing 36 US companies that help pay for college for their employees. A third option, which is gaining popularity, is have your child go to a two-year community college to knock out the basics and then finish up at the four-year university. This will cut your cost in more than half. And finally, we know several students that are taking advantage of the college ROTC program, having all of their college paid for. So this is the time we need to explain to our teenagers how money works and how expensive going to college is these days than when it was when we went. The challenge we face is that 18 year olds typically don't and can't comprehend this. This is where we need to let them know. Little tough love here. So say something like this to your child. Think about it. Hey, 18 year old, you wouldn't expect your mother and I to buy you a brand new Cadillac Escalade each year for the next four years, right? But this is what we need to say to them, and this is what we need to compare that to. They wouldn't say yes to that, and therefore we can, com we can compare that to this college decision. Or try this one. This is a favorite one we talk about. Let your child know that they can go to any college they want to go to, but be prepared for your mother and I moving in with you, your spouse, and your children when we retire. <laughs> so again, we need to save for our retirement first, parents so that we're able to be self-sufficient and have plenty of money in retirement. And here's what's important, not be a burden on our children down the road. And this then forces us to do what we say, make college decisions within a budget while we maximize our retirement savings. Hope you enjoyed this controversial Connor Keys Corner. I'm sure I'll get some pushback from parents, but please let me know your questions, put them in the comment section below, and don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any further additional issues of Connor Key's Money Corner. Talk to you next time on Connor Key's Money Corner. Thanks.